Well, good evening and welcome back to our Sunday night sesh. I hope you're all well. Um, first of all, I'm going to start with an apologies uh, this evening. I am very rudely uh, taking a little bit of time off this weekend. Um, so this is why I'm not coming to you live. This is a pre-record that I've done earlier in the week. Um, so obviously you are watching this uh, on catch up, but I will be back. Uh, as normal the week after, um, but I hope we can still uh, join together and worship and think and pray um, and continue our journey through Advent. If you uh, missed last week, please do not adjust uh, your TV screens. Um, the lighting is a little bit different. Um, that was intentional that during this period of Advent, I thought we'd sort of darken uh, the lighting a little bit. We've got our Advent wreath that I'll be talking through and we'll be journeying through um, and lighting the candles as well. So it just adds a little bit more atmosphere um, as we go along. But I hope you're well, um, wherever you are. I hope you're really enjoying this season of Advent. Uh, one of the things that cropped up on my timeline, which I thought was a really good idea, and I don't know if you would uh, like to join in, um, but if you take uh, the book of Luke out of the Bible, it's um, got 20, I think 25 chapters. Um, and if you read one of them every day during Advent and the lead up to Christmas, you will get to see the full story of Jesus from his birth to his death, resurrection um, and onwards. Uh, so it's something that I've been doing. Uh, if you want to do it, obviously, uh, now what are we... Uh, Fourth, is it? I think today. Uh, I'm filming this earlier in the week, uh, so you have a little bit of catch up. But it's a good way to journey together through Advent. So I encourage you, um, as you are going through, I don't know what your Advent's like this year, whether you've managed to slow down at all a little bit, as we were talking about last week, uh, or whether things are still quite hectic. Um, but anyway, there we go. So, what are we doing this evening? Well, let's have a quick look at what's coming up. Lots to tell you about. Um, which is really cool. So before we go any further, let's light our Advent candles, shall we? So our second week in Advent, we're thinking particularly about the theme of faith, and that's what we're going to be unpacking a little bit tonight. Uh, so here is our Advent prayer for this second week in Advent. People of God, be glad. Your God delights in you, giving you joy for sadness, turning the dark to light. Be strong in hope, therefore, for your God comes to save. You are God's children. We pray, Lord, make us one in love, in the love of Christ, today and forever. Amen. So, let's turn our focus, shall we? I've got, uh, ow, gosh, that caught me on the words. Um, <laughs> I've got our white candle ready for Christmas Day. So let's light this one over here for our second week, shall we? And let the candles burn. I quite like this stand. It's sort of at different levels. Because obviously what happens is you light these candles during Advent. The first one gets really, really small. Um, and like the last one still stays pretty big. Um, but it's good to do. Uh, and I look forward to lighting our white one at midnight on Christmas Eve. So what else have I got to tell you about? Um, well, some exciting things coming up. If you live in and around Kingswood, we have our Christmas carols around Kingswood, um, which was uh, really well attended. We had over 100 people come last year, going around, singing some carols, having a bit of fun, bringing their own sneaky mulled wines and whatever with them uh, as we journey around Kingswood. And then as we come to Christmas Eve, we go uh, carol singing at Kestephen Care Home in the morning, which has now become a Kingswood tradition, um, spreading a little Christmas joy. Uh, I think we might actually be indoors this year. Obviously, with COVID the past two years, we've been wrapped up warm, singing outside, sharing some sweets and chocolate um, to the residents who kind of watched us out the window, bless them. And then on Christmas Eve, we have our crib service over in Kingswood Park's primary school, where we build up the crib together, they hear the Christmas story, just as it's beginning to get dark before we get home, get our jammies on, and get ready for Santa's arrival. And then we'll have our midnight mass, so we're going to have it in person. I'll do a pre-record, um, so if you want to stay up late and join in uh, with that, um, we'll have that on all our social media channels as well. That'll be half past 11 on Christmas Eve. That is my favourite service 
of the year. And then also, lastly, just to tell you again, if you haven't heard already, we're starting our new Sunday morning service on the 8th of January. Our weekly service over in the school, uh, that's really coming together. And also, some great news to tell you about, um, our Faith Shorts project is back up and running. So some of you will have come across these short videos, they're less than a minute. I'm going to pop some out uh, every week. Uh, they're just sort of a thought to get us thinking, talking. Uh, and helping us as we go on our faith journeys as we go along. So dead excited about that. So let's have a quick look, shall we, at what our word for the week is this week. I've already told you, um, but here we go. So our word of the week this week is faith. That's why we light this second candle, thinking particularly about faith. The second candle is all about um, the prophets. So the prophets in the Bible are those that went before people, spoke truth to power a lot of the time. Um, and really interestingly, uh, it didn't always end well, which I suppose it's never going to really if you are speaking truth to power. God gave these people um, words and pictures and visions, asked them to do certain things. They were pretty crazy in their uh, sort of characteristics and personality. Uh, and I think the idea of faith. It's an interesting one, isn't it? The uh, statistics have come out uh, this past week uh, from the census saying now that Christianity is in a minority in the UK. And I think the wording was quite clumsy. I mean, it's always quite clumsy when you've got to sell papers and, and stuff like that. But Christianity is still the main faith um, in the UK. Um, obviously, those people that are not identifying as somebody of faith has grown and Christianity has dropped, of course. Um, and adding all other faiths and people of no faith does add up to more um, people than uh, who consider themselves Christian or, or Christian in faith in that sort of way. But there's still a huge majority of people that do have faith. And it's interesting, I think, when it comes to this idea of faith. Um, how we identify and what that means to us on our journey. For me, faith is a gift. And sometimes my faith is really strong and sometimes it really isn't. Um, it's not linear um, for me in any stretch of the imagination. And different things can come along and, and can damage and can harm. Different things can come along and, you know, if I begin to really press in and invest, um, it, it does change. And I think Basically, what I, I'd like to say is, and what I find more often than not, is people have this idea about having faith as um, being perfect or striving for perfection or looking like holiness. But I read uh, somewhere this morning that having faith is about connection rather than perfection. Having faith is about connecting with God, about connecting with ourselves and connecting with the world around us connecting on a level that we might not always be aware of, connecting on a level that takes sometimes a bit of discipline, connecting on a level that sometimes where we feel unconnected. So I don't know how that sits with you. I don't know what sort of thoughts that might spark in you. It'd be really good to have to be sat in the same room and have this conversation about faith. But particularly as we see, think about that nativity story coming round for the first time, you know, those people in that story, we look at it now, um, having read the story, understood the story of Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, the wise men, the angels. But faith to them at that point would have looked very different. The wise men set off without a plan, just an inkling. The shepherds were told to go, so they did. Mary and Joseph having that faith that they were part of something bigger, yet not quite fully grasping it or understanding it. So I wonder what your faith looks like today. I wonder what it looks like this week. I wonder if you reflect back on your on your life, where you might have found that you would have faith quite surprisingly and unexpectedly. So as we journey, let's continue to think and to hold on to that gift that God gives us of faith. So I've got a video for you now. Um, I was looking at some of the, um, the poetry that I found last week, but... Um, 
the the poem for this week didn't quite fit. But what I do have um, is a really good friend of mine, my oldest friend, actually. Um, he's a Methodist minister uh, called Mark Stennett, uh, and he goes by the name of Cyber Sten online. Uh, and every day during Advent, he's done these short reflections. Now, there is a bit of a warning about this reflection. If you are a vegan like me, um, it might not uh, land very well. But let me assure you, there are other ways of uh, having bacon at Christmas. But without further ado, here is uh, Cyber Sten, if you want to look him up uh, and find his other reflections as we journey through Advent. But enjoy this one. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that for those meat eaters amongst us, that a lot of the stuff on offer at Christmas, it, it's hyped up, it is kind of extra with bacon. Turkey, lattice bacon, sausages wrapped in bacon, even prunes wrapped in bacon. It's this sort of one ingredient that kind of amplifies our kind of Christmas eating festivities. I wonder, food to one side, is there an ingredient that we can add, whether you pay for it or not, or whether it's time well spent or not, or some other way, one kind of ingredient that we can sprinkle into this Christmas season. I wonder, what are we adding to our Christmas flavour this year? I'm not quite sure I the idea of prunes wrapped in bacon, even if I did eat meat, but you know, I suppose everybody's got their own uh, taste. I remember once uh, at Jesus School, we <laughs> we had a chef, bless his soul. Um, we had, I think it was it was bananas wrapped in bacon. Apparently, it's a thing. Who knew? Um, there we go. But anyway, uh, spread a little bit extra as we're thinking about faith during this season of Advent and pressing in uh, to those thoughts and those disciplines um, as we go through this season. Now I've got a treat for you this evening. Um, we have our hymn for the weekend and this, um, you may know if you've been with us for a couple of years, is uh, from a choir down in London called the Spirituals Choir. Amazing stuff on YouTube. Uh, I do usher you there to check them out uh, and their songs and hymns and things like that. Um, but this week we have the Spirituals Choir uh, and this song is called Ring Them Bells. So let's have a listen, shall we? So like I say, do check them out uh, on YouTube for the full version of that. I've just cut it a little bit short because I don't want it stung by the copyright. But let's bring our week to a close together, shall we? Uh, as we usually do in our usual way. 
Um, so our evening prayer tonight comes from the Mute community based down in London, uh, and it's our Compline evening prayer. So may the divine God in three give you a peaceful and perfect sleep. Amen. Our being is sustained by the triune name of God, who made heaven and earth. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of selfishness and division, jealousy and bitterness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O God, save us from this time of trial. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Creator and to the Redeemer and to the Companion as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for it is you, God, who helps us to sleep in safety. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, enable us to sleep in safety. Be present to us, Lord Jesus, for the night has come and the day has passed. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we, Seek for you, O Christ. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. In the name of the Creator, and of the Redeemer, and of the Companion. Amen. So thank you for being with us again this evening as we journey, uh, continue our journey through this Advent season. I hope your week has been still and holy. I'll be back as usual next week, uh, but until then, do take care. God bless and bye-bye.